and hello everyone welcome back to a new video so today we'll be writing our first c plus plus program so first off you probably need to install c plus plus if you live on windows i am very sorry to tell you but i up until this day, have no idea how to install C++ on Windows. I could never really get it right, and I just assumed I'm too dumb to do it. But if you are on Linux, it's a simple apt get install gcc, or a simple pacman dash s gcc. And yeah, if you're on Windows, it's, I think you use something else. I think it's mingw. Or whatnot but if you can figure that out then believe me you can go through C++ without having any problems whatsoever all right I'm going to just navigate uh, whoops just going to navigate into my folder where my C++ actually is or actually let's rather not we don't need this cool so here is basically the folder I'm going to use I would recommend you open up this folder inside of VS Code. If you are using VS Code, if you're not using VS Code, it's perfectly fine. You can still follow along. I'll just be using VS Code because that is the IDE of my choice, the code editor of my choice. So it might not be your choice, but it's what I'd really like to use. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it main.cpp. You don't need to call it cpp, you can call it cp, you can call it cxx. There's a lot of things or a lot of extensions you can use for C++, but I usually just go with cpp because that's the more common one to use and it just makes sense to use it. You can also go C, but then it will be expecting C code. So always try and stay with cpp if possible. You can then either drag and drop this into Visual Studio Code and it will open it up for you or you can open it up via, if we go like this, via just using your explorer. Because this explorer is exactly what you'll see if you were to use this. So if I were to delete this here, that file there would also get deleted. All right, so I'm gonna minimize that. Now here, we can start writing our first C++ program. It's simple hello world. So I'm going to say include, and I want to include IO stream. This is just so we can put something on the screen later on. We'll be getting deeper into including and stuff like that later, but for right now we don't have to worry too much about it. We do want to say int main, and in here we want to put our code. So all our main code is going to go into int main. This is our program, our entire program is going in there. So it's fairly simple. Also, I forgot to say here, using namespace std. And I'll also be explaining in about two tutorials what this does, why it's important or not important, whether you should use it or not. But for the first two videos, I believe it's perfectly fine that we can use this just so we can get the hang of it without it and then later get the hang of it with it. Anyhow, remember all your lines of code should end with a semicolon except for this include and I believe this main function doesn't need to end with it either. So remember semicolon is very important. Now to put something on the screen it's as simple as saying C out which means console output because we're going to get the output inside of the console and then two of these smaller than I believe that's smaller than brackets or symbols and we can say, hello world, as simple as that. We can save this file and I'm going to open up my terminal here. So I'm going to go to terminal and say new terminal. Now, if you're on Windows, you will not be able to use GCC or G++, but I do believe VS Code does come with an inbuilt debugger, as you can see there, which you can use to run your C++ code. But if you're on Linux, then it's as simple as just going to your terminal, saying GCC, or saying G++, it's completely up to you. G++ is just another way of saying GCC. 
I like to go G++ because that just makes me feel more like I'm doing it specifically for C++. But you can also use G++ or GCC to compile C code as well. Anyhow, so G++ main.cpp. Now if we run that, then if we were to list out what's inside of here, or actually let's go to our folder. As you can see, we have a a dot out. This is the output that G++ created. We can go here and if I were to list out what's in here, you can see there is a dot out. If I were to show you my explorer here, um, if I were to show you my explorer, you can see a dot out. So we actually got an executable. Now to run this, if you're on Windows, you can just double click on the executable file. If you're on Linux, you can say dot slash and a dot out. And as you can see, we get hello world. If you do not like that this says a dot out, we can say g++ main dot c++ dash o. This dash o basically means the output file name. So in this case, we can call this output because that's what I usually like to call it just because it makes it simple. I'm just going to delete this a dot out and then I'm going to run this. It will compile the program for us and now we have an output. It's the same as that a dot out we just had, it's just now we say dot slash, and instead of a dot out, we can just say output. And we get the same output there. Pretty neat, right? We can also move this panel to the right because I just like it at the right a bit more. And we can maybe do this. Cool. Now, what I'm going to teach you is something that is optional. These are some optional things you can do in C++, but it's not really required anymore as of the newer versions of C++. So first off, you can say return zero. This is uh, something that you don't really need to do anymore. I just do it because of convenience or just because I want to, because it feels cool, but you don't need to see, say return zero anymore because this, this just basically means this is the end of the program. But C++ made it so that you don't really need this return zero anymore. It will automatically know when the end of the program has been reached. And that is when this right here has been reached. So you can just say return zero and that will, it won't do anything in our code. It will just tell C++ that, hey, that's where it ends. But C++ can tell you that automatically. Then what I'm going to show you here is also optional. You don't actually ever have to use it, but you'll see me use this throughout the most of the course. And you also will also get into using this later on, but you don't ever actually need to use it anymore because C++ got updates. So we can just say int and then arg C and then, and that should be arg C not arg V. And here you can say char const asterisk arg v and two, two square brackets. And that should be an int like that. This is something you can use to get input from the terminal. We're not going to cover this right now. We will be covering this at a later stage. You can save that and let's try and run this. Whoops. So you always need to compile before you try and run it. Now, if we were to run it, as you can see, we get hello world. So it didn't really change anything. It's just so we can get input from the terminal if we ever wanted to. But we'll get to into using that later on. Also, if you do not like how this starts right after this word, the words right here, it's very simple to get rid of that. You can just add two more of these smaller sign bracket thingies. And basically this always just means add to. And you can say end al. This just means end the line, go to a new line. So if we were to compile this, and I'm also going to run it by saying and twice, so ampersand twice, and then dot slash run or dot slash output, because that's the file we're trying to run. As you can see, there is now a new line. So this is not here anymore, as you could have maybe remembered from here. So you can use end out. Although this is optional. And yeah, that is the basics of a Hello World program in C++. For the most part, especially if you're a beginner or you just don't want to, you don't need to use return. And you also don't need these arguments inside of there. They're completely optional. Using this is perfectly fine. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next 
C++ Tutorial.